So let's solve this problem. We have nitrogen. It undergoes a polytropic process from this pressure and temperature during which, you know, here's the equation of the polytropic process. So we have P uh, V to the 1.2 is equal to a constant. And we've been writing this uh, P V to the N is equal to a constant. So really the exponent N is 1.2 for this process. All right. Um, we could list the temperature and pressure, and I'll do that in a minute. The initial volume, V1, is 0.1 meter cubed, and the work for the process is 95 kilojoules. So maybe we need to start organizing some information. Work 1 to 2 is 95 kilojoules. Maybe I like to put a table together, put the state, and uh, we're going to start at initial state 1 and final state 2. Interested in pressure and KPA, that pressure is 700. And they don't tell us the final pressure, the temperature in Kelvin, and it's uh, 600. And the volume in meter cubed, it's uh, 0 0.1. Okay. Hmm. Okay, we're going to assume it behaves as an ideal gas. That's good. And we neglect kinetic potential energy effects. That's normal. Determine the heat transfer in kilojoules. So we're asked to find this cap Q from 1 to 2. We're given the work 1 to 2, and we're asked to find the heat transfer 1 to 2. And then also the entropy change in kilojoules per Kelvin, and so that's S2 minus S1, and that's capital S, so that's the total entropy change, not specific entropy change. Okay, well, what's our strategy? Well, our strategy would be for the first problem to see about using the first law. Okay, let's write the first law of thermodynamics for the process. Well, we would have some amount that would be in mass, um, the final specific internal energy, the initial specific internal energy, equal to the heat transfer in during the process minus the work performed by the gas, focusing on that gas. Now, they gave us the work for the process is 95, so that's done right here. Boom. This is what we're asked to solve for. And we know that it's nitrogen, and so it behaves as an ideal gas. So to find U2, we really need to just find the specific internal energy of nitrogen. It's only a function of temperature. I need T2. And then U1, that would be U the fun of nitrogen at T1. Okay. Well, uh, maybe we come up and add a line into our table to help us. Maybe we'll put uh, U here in uh, kilojoules per kilogram. That's really what we're looking for. And if we could get the, the U1 here and the U2 there, then we could calculate this change in U and then multiply by the mass, but then we need to calculate the mass too. So there's a bunch we need to do to be able to solve for this Q1 to 2 using the first law. Okay, first of all, if you take a look at the information given, if you look at table A23, table A23 in our textbook, they give us properties for nitrogen as a function of temperature, but they give us U bar, not U. So the value is coming back in kilojoules per kilomole Kelvin. Now, since we already have the temperature of 700, not 700 there, sorry, 600 Kelvin. Let me just rewrite 700 there. But we know the temperature of 600 Kelvin at state 1. We can go to table A23 and look up U-bar for nitrogen at 600. And that comes back 1, 2, 5, 7, 4.0. A large number, 12,574 kilojoules per kilomole. If you wanted U in units of kilojoules per kilogram, how would you make that transformation? Well, the U would be the U bar divided by the molar mass of the nitrogen. We, we look up the molar mass of the nitrogen. It's 28.01 kilograms per kilomole. So you take U bar 
divided by the molar mass, you have U on a mass basis. That comes in at 448.91. Okay, so we're getting closer. We just calculated the, the U1. Now we need to get the U2 as well as the mass. Well, how am I going to find that mass? Well, I'm given pressure, temperature, and volume and told that it, nitrogen behaves as an ideal gas. So I'll use the ideal gas equation and I'm going to write it like this. M is equal to uh, P1 V1 divided by R T1. All right. So the pressure, initial pressure is 700 kPa. The initial volume 0.1 meter cubed. You take the universal gas constant 8.314 kilo. I'm going to put kilopascal meter cube. That's precisely a kilojoule. But, and then we have per kilomole Kelvin. And if you divide that by the molar mass of 28.01 kilograms per kilomole, instead of dividing, you know, down here, you just bring it up here, put the molar mass up there. So this is R bar. Okay, and then our temperature is 600 Kelvin. You've done this a few times, but um, so you get good at it. But the kilopascals and the meter cubes and the per kilomole and the per, per kilogram go, and then you're left with kilo. I'm sorry, Kelvin go. And you're left with kilograms. So the mass comes in at 0.393. O five two, too many digits, but hey, we keep them all. It's an intermediate calculation. So there, there's our mass. So we got one more down. We really need to get the temperature at state two. Okay, well, do they give us the pressure at two, the temperature at two, the volume at two? What do they give us to allow us to make that calculation? Not a whole lot. But they gave us the work, one to two. And we recall from a polytropic process that the work is equal to the integral of PdV from V1 to V2. And when we put in this expression right here, uh, right here, you know, when, whichever way you'd like to write it, but you put that in for a polytropic process, and from first principles, we find that the work is P2V2 minus P1V1 divided by 1 minus that exponent N, which is 1.2 for this problem. We look at that and we say, well, that didn't get us very far. But then again, we remember we have an ideal gas. And so P2 times V2 is always equal to MRT2. And P1, V1 is equal to M, R, T1. Uh, now we're getting somewhere. Now we can calculate that temperature that we're looking for, T2. And I'm just going to say that the algebra we can do. So T2 is equal to T1 plus the work, 1 to 2, times 1 minus that polytropic exponent, N, divided by the mass we just calculated, and then R, which is R bar divided by the molar mass. All right, just making sure you have your units down. We can, let me just put, put that out. Let's do it. So T1 is 600 Kelvin. All right, plus 95 kilojoules. All right, times one minus 1.2 divided by the mass. 0.393052 kilograms. And then our R, our R is our R bar divided by the molar mass. That comes in at 0.2968. And in my calculator, I kept more digits, but hey, that's just, I'm just writing four here. And that was uh, kilojoules per kilogram Kelvin. So our kilograms go our kilojoules go, we're left with Kelvin and Kelvin, and we can add those together and we find that T2 comes in at 
137.14 Kelvin. Okay, so I could maybe come up here and add it into my table, 437.14 Kelvin. Now I can go to the table A23 and interpolate. I can interpolate to calculate U-bar at that temperature of 437. When I do that, it comes back 9,093. And then I divide that by the molar mass to get 324.63 for the specific internal energy. And there you go, we got that last one finally. So I'm running out of room. Let me try and sneak that in right here. So what we find is that Q1 to 2 is equal to the work 1 to 2 plus the mass times U2 minus U1. And in the interest of space, I'm just going to say Q1 to 2 is equal to 46.15 46.15 kilojoule. I believe you can make that count. Everything's done there. That's the answer for part A. Well, unfortunately, that was the easier part. We still have a very challenging part, and that's now the entropy change. And what I need to do is I need to almost clean up here. And so I'm going to, yeah, I'm going to clean up, and that way I'll have a little room to work with. So now for part B, we want to calculate that entropy change. Well, what's the process for that? Well, S2 minus S1 is equal to on a mass basis or molar basis, since we already calculated the mass, we'll just stay with the mass basis. And then you're going to say, do I want to account for variable specific heats? Sure, let's do that because we already went to table A23 to calculate U as a function of temperature. We didn't use constant specific heats for part A, so let's stay with the table A23 and variable specific heats for part B. So this would be the S uh, naught at two, temperature 2 minus S naught at temperature 1 minus the R natural log of P2 over P1. Okay, so it's very similar. Now I just realized I need to move that table over a little. Now, try and do this. I'll just move that table over a little bit. Good. And this was our volume. And this was in Kelvin. And we come over and we say, we're going to go back to table A23, and we're going to get S bar naught. And it's only a function of temperature, and it's in units of kilojoules per kilomole Kelvin. And then what we do is divide that by big M, just like we did here to go from here to here. You divide that by the molar mass to get S naught in kilojoules per kilogram Kelvin. Okay, well, it's only a function of temperature. We would had the 600, so we can just look up S bar naught, 212.066, and then we do the same thing. We have to interpolate at the temperature, 437.14, and it's 202.670. And I will say that the entropy calculations are notorious. You need to keep as many digits as you can in your calculator and not round them off on intermediate calculations. So there you go. And you know what? I didn't even write these down, um, but I could have. And so basically um, what I did was I put the bar, 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 and I went over here and divided by the molar mass. Okay. So it's like I know the, the, as a function of temperature, there's we got R bar, good. The molar mass we know, the mass we know, good. Um, what about the pressure one? Sure, we know that. The only unknown, pressure two. Pressure at two is not known. So how are we going to find the pressure at two? Well, there's probably a couple ways of doing it. Um, we go back and uh, um, say from ideal gas equation that um, P... 1 V1 divided by T1 is always P2 V2 divided by T2 
And so I really would like to get P2 if I knew P1, which I do. And I would have a ratio of volumes. This would be the volume 1 divided by the volume 2. And then multiply by a ratio of temperatures, T2 over T1. And it's like, oh, I'm almost there. It's like I'm looking for P2. I've got P1. I've got the T1 and the T2. And I've got the V1, but I don't have the V2. All right. So now we need to get V2 in order to get P2 in order to get the change in entropy. So you stare at the problem for a while, think about what information's given, what information's not given, and you can do it a couple different ways. Hmm, how, what's the best way of explaining this? Let me back up here and say this. We can look at this equation right here. We'll have P1, V1 to the N is equal to P2, V2 to the N. True? True. Well, um, let me rewrite it over here. So I'm going to say that P2, V2 times V2 to the N minus 1 is equal to P1, V1 to the N. I didn't do any mistake in mathematics. I just sort of split and said, I'm going to let a one hole on this P2 join, the V2 join with this P2. All right, and then I'm going to leave this alone like this. Okay, well, why did we do that? Well, um, you go back to that uh, work equation, okay? And the work equation was the work um, is equal to the P2, V2 minus P1, V1 divided by 1 minus N. And I say, I'm going to go ahead and calculate P2, V2 as being P1, V1 plus the work times 1 minus N. Does that make sense? Hopefully it makes sense. So I'm able to calculate this P2, V2 so that I can come up to this equation and say V2 to the N minus 1 is equal to P1, V1 to the N divided by P2, V2, which I just calculated. And then I can exponentiate both sides, put 1 over N minus 1, do that. And there's the equation for V2. Maybe there's a simpler way, maybe a more clear-cut way, whatever, whatever. But you have to be able to get the volume V2. Okay, so we calculate the volume V2, and I'm running out of room. It's 0.487124. You could write it up here if you like. And then once you have that V2, you can come back and stick it in right there, and you calculate that P2. That P2 comes in at 104.7 kPa. Now I finally have the P2, and I'm running out of room big time again. And we go back to this equation, and we calculate the change in entropy S1 over S2 is equal to the answer uh, 0.08. 9, 8 uh, kilojoules per Kelvin in boxit. And that's a bad looking zero at the beginning. And that's the answer for part B. Well, hopefully all of that made sense. I'm not saying it's the most direct route, but it's like, let me just try and summarize. I've got an entropy equation and know everything or did a little work to get everything except for that pressure P2. One of the ways to get the pressure P2 is if I can get the volume V2. I go back to my work equation and I play with it algebraically, do mathematical manipulation to get V2. Then substitute the V2 in here to get the P2. Once I know the P2, I bring the P2 right in here and get the change in S. All right. 
that's enough for this problem.